triumph and relief in Oklahoma and across the country today. He did what? The governor just granted He did. Did he commute his sentence? As Julius Jones, just four hours before his scheduled execution, is spared. After nearly 20 years on death row, Republican Governor Kevin Stitt commuting his sentence to life in prison without the possibility of parole. I just say, yeah! Yeah! Outside the prison, Julius's sister Antoinette rejoicing, but speaking with my colleague Marcus Moore about the emotional toll. Have you had a chance to, to speak with Julius? Yes, so his, the, his first words were, I love you. It's a blessing to be able to hear his voice and to know that he will still be alive. It's a lighter feeling. And for it to come down uh, almost to the 11th hour of uh, this decision, uh, what do you make of that? That was, it's very hurtful. Uh, I felt like it was very cruel. Um, but again, we are still grateful that the governor granted him life and that he stepped in when he did. His last meal was at 9 p.m. last night. He uh, was brought out of his cell at 3 a.m. this morning to have a physical conducted on him to make sure that he was healthy enough to be executed. Julius was 19 when he was arrested and later sentenced to death for the murder of Paul Howell, a crime many believe he didn't commit. We think Julius was wrongfully convicted and that Oklahoma is at risk of executing an innocent man. The case for years, the subject of intense debate. Commutation is recommended. The Oklahoma Pardon and Parole Board voted twice to commute Julius's sentence to life in prison with the possibility of parole. But simply, I have doubts about this case. I cannot ignore those doubts, especially when the stakes are life and death. Living for the last 36 days on death watch has been physical and psychological torture and terror. Pastor Keith Jossel had the difficult task of administering Julius's last rites inside the execution chamber. Today is a day of celebration uh, for this transition while we continue to fight for his total freedom. For more than two decades, Julius Jones has maintained his innocence. I wasn't involved in, in any way. I wasn't present. I didn't even know he had been killed until after the fact. Earlier this year, I spoke with Julius's mother and sister, his fiercest allies, as they pinned their hopes on the governor's decision. The governor yes. of Oklahoma. If he were sitting right here, Madeline, what would you say to him? Most of all, being in leadership, I know sometimes it's hard to make decisions, and you have to try to make the right decision. What does justice for Julius look like? It looks like Julius being able to feel the sun on his skin. It looks like him having no chains when he gets to go outside. It looks like freedom. The public outpouring and renewed scrutiny in the case helped in part by the ABC docuseries, The Last Defense, from executive producer Viola Davis. The support of high-profile athletes like Steph Curry and Baker Mayfield and Kim Kardashian. Kim Kardashian visiting your brother. What was that like for you and, and for him? That, I'm not going to lie, that touched, that touched my heart. I felt comfortable around her, and then I could see the mother in her. On Instagram, Kardashian writing, I'm so grateful to everyone who used their voice and helped to save Julius's life today. Free Julius Jones! Leading up to the decision, a groundswell of support and outrage as the hours ticked onward. It's very imperative that we meet with the governor. Julius's family surrounded by supporters, attempting to meet with Governor Stitt multiple times, only to be turned away. Hundreds of students in Oklahoma this week marching off their school campuses in support of Julius. I'm ordering you to leave the area. And overnight, a protest outside the governor's mansion. We had conservatives like CPAC. We had liberals. We had Republicans and Democrats. We showed that when it is a case of justice, that there really are no boundaries. Paul Howell's family has maintained that Julius Jones is guilty. At the pardon and parole board hearing, his daughter Rachel sharing her pain, seen in this video from the Oklahoman. And I am here to warn you, he is not innocent. What if this was your family member that was murdered? 
In a statement today, Rachel said, it comforts me that the governor recognizes Julius Jones's guilt and has ruled an executive order for him to never be eligible for commutation, pardon, or parole for the remainder of his life. Back in 1999, prison seemed like an unlikely place to find Julius Jones. He was a champion high school basketball player. Sophomore Julius Jones. Loved by his teachers, a star student. Julius attended the University of Oklahoma on an academic scholarship as well, which was big time. But all that changed on a summer night more than 20 years ago. Gunshots ring out in a quiet neighborhood in Edmond, Oklahoma. My son's been shot out of the front yard. You know, he got no pearls. 45-year-old Paul Howell gunned down in his family's driveway, the victim of a carjacking. His GMC Suburban, a hot commodity for car thieves. The victim's sister was the only eyewitness. Megan Toby described the shooter as a young black man wearing a red bandana, a white shirt, and a stocking cap or a skull cap. She was not able to identify the shooter's face because it was covered. Two days after the Howell murder, the police stumbled upon the Suburban parked at a grocery store. The store was just blocks away from a chop shop where police learned a young man by the name of Liddell King had offered to sell a Suburban. You mentioned Liddell King, I think car thefts. He was involved in car thefts all around the metro area. Liddell was interviewed by the lead detectives in this case. He told the police that on the night of the crime, a guy named Chris Jordan comes to his apartment. A few minutes later, according to Liddell King, Julius Jones drives up. Chris Jordan and Julius Jones were high school acquaintances. Chris was a suspected gang member. Julius, a college student who'd recently been in some trouble of his own. My first year of school, I got into shoplifting. I stole pages, I stole things like a show. Liddell King says the two young men came to see him, asking for help on how to sell a stolen Suburban. But he says the high-profile murder made it too risky to sell the car for parts. King, a potential suspect himself, points the finger at Julius Jones. He had a red bandana around his neck. He had a stocking cap on. King also accuses Chris Jordan of being the driver. Jordan was taken into custody and charged with felony murder, claiming he and Julius were out looking for Suburbans to steal, but says it was Julius who pulled the trigger. Both Liddell King and Christopher Jordan were directing the police's attention to the home of Julius Jones's parents as a place that would have incriminating items of evidence. And they found them, a gun wrapped in a red bandana, tucked inside an upstairs crawl space. But his attorneys say the evidence police found could have been planted by Jordan the night after the murder. Chris Jordan denied this claim during trial, the day after the evidence was found. Julius Jones was arrested for capital murder. At trial, his defense team failed to include Julius's alibi. He said he was at home having dinner with his parents and sister. None were called to the stand to testify. His lawyers also point out that the jury was not made aware of the fact that Liddell King was facing felony charges in an unrelated case until after his damaging testimony against Julius. Liddell King was facing a minimum of 20 years on a check fraud matter because he had three strikes. It was dismissed entirely. And Chris Jordan served 15 years and is now a free man. So they had every motive and incentive to lie, and the jury didn't get to hear all of that evidence. Julius's defense team submitted files to the parole board, which they argue proves his innocence, including affidavits and taped video interviews with inmates who served time with Chris Jordan and who say they heard him confess to the murder. And like I said, you know, it was just, I just remember us having a conversation that he admitted that he the one basically got the murder charge, you know, did the killing, and it wasn't this guy. In a statement, Chris Jordan's attorney saying that Jordan maintains his position that his role in the death of Paul Howell was as an accomplice to Julius Jones. Mr. Jordan testified truthfully in the jury trial of Mr. Jones and denies confessing to anyone. In Oklahoma tonight, for the first time in 22 years, some relief 
for Julius's friends and family, who say for Julius, justice is still a work in progress. We keep pressing forward and fighting. It's still not over, you know, it's, it's just the beginning. To everybody that is listening, thank you. Your voice mattered. Hi everyone, George Stephanopoulos here. Thanks for checking out the ABC News YouTube channel. If you'd like to get more videos, show highlights, and watch live event coverage, click on the right over here to subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to download the ABC News app for breaking news alerts. Thanks for watching.